Bill Kaysen goes on to say that once the time had come to return, the astronauts were simply loaded into a command module that was then airdropped above the ocean by a C-5A cargo plane. And what do you know? During a radio interview, an airline pilot called up to say that he saw just that when it was time for Apollo 15 to return. A uh, pilot came on the air when I was doing a broadcast just like this one, and he says, Bill, I agree with you 100%. He says, I was flying from France, San Francisco to Tokyo, and I saw, uh, along with several passengers, I saw a command capsule dropped out of a C-5A, and the red and white candy-striped parachutes opened, and it descended to the surface of the ocean. I love this one. It's casing at its finest. Apollo 15 entered the Earth's atmosphere at a point about 1260 miles southwest of Oahu and splashed down about 328 miles due north of that island. The splashdown site and the path traveled are well documented. But let's pretend that everyone who witnessed the events that day is a liar. Let's suppose a C-5A dropped the command module and it drifted to that spot. Could a Trans-Pacific passenger jet have gotten close enough to witness the event? First off, why would NASA have conducted their covert operation near a known commercial jet corridor? Oh, I forgot. It's because Casings conspirators were stupid beyond belief. They lacked any forethought and were totally unprepared for any contingencies. After all, up to this time, Jared tells us that they had dropped only five command modules, all but Apollo 10 and 11 into the Pacific Ocean to be recovered by the equally stupid U.S. Navy. How could they have predicted a commercial airliner would be able to see them? Now, if I had been one of the conspirators, I would have given the C-5A a proper escort, perhaps a pair of F-4 Phantoms. Then any nosy private or commercial aircraft who witnessed the drop would have been toast. Better yet, fly a couple of captured MiG-21s and blame the disaster on Castro. The 747-200 series, which began service in 1968, would have been the aircraft of choice for a Trans-Pacific flight when Apollo 15 splashed down on August 7, 1971. Both the 747 and the C-5A had a maximum service altitude of 43,000 feet, and both typically flew between 20,000 and 40,000 feet. The main parachutes used on Apollo, the ones with the red and white candy stripes, opened at an altitude below 10,000 feet, about 2 miles. At higher altitudes, there wouldn't be enough air mass for the chutes to deploy. Assuming the 747 was cruising at the low end, 20,000 feet, and regardless of what altitude the C-5A dropped the command module, the parachutes would have opened no closer than 2 miles below the 747. Would the C-5A and the chutes be visible and recognizable to the pilot and passengers of a 747 at that distance? Maybe. But then, consider this. Anyone who managed to stay awake when the concept of the Great Circle was introduced during their 6th grade geography class would know that the shortest distance between two points on a near sphere like the Earth takes the shape of an arc. For example, Google Earth shows us that the shortest distance between San Francisco and Tokyo takes you near the coastline of Alaska, which happens to be the path that all commercial aircraft take for that direct flight, even in 1971. And the shortest arc between that path and the Apollo 15 splashdown site is 1,550 miles, which is the distance from New York City to San Antonio, or London to Istanbul or Port Lincoln to Darwin. Could the pilot and passengers aboard a 747 flying in the commercial corridor from San Francisco to Tokyo see chutes open 1,550 miles away? No. Even if they were all carrying telescopes with them, at a distance of 1,550 miles, thanks to the curvature of the Earth, there would be the equivalent of a 75-mile-high mountain blocking their direct line of sight. If I were to pull a Jer in this situation, I might suggest that Casing and or his unnamed pilot were being somewhat less than truthful. I have never claimed everything Bill Casing said was accurate. As wishful as it is, 
there will never be any material from either side of the fence that will be without error. My attitude is not simply because Casing said it, my stance is Bill said it and I have verified it. I wonder how Jarrah verified this jewel of a claim. As with all the other Casing claims that I've seen Jarrah use in his videos, it's painfully obvious that Jarrah didn't verify anything. So, no matter how many times Jarrah changes his mind, there is no evidence that the astronauts stayed in low Earth orbits or that they stayed on the ground and were dropped from a C-5A. And that makes only one more ridiculous claim to go. Ciao, moon hoax conspirators. Wherever you are.